Today our topic of discussion is Staphylococcus aureus. It's a gram positive cocci. The word staphyle comes from a Greek word staphyli which means branch of grapes and the word coccus comes from a Greek word coccos which means berry. They are so named because they are arranged in a grape like clusters when seen under light microscope. Biochemically they are catalyst positive, coagulase positive, non motile, non sporing, gram positive, facultative anaerobe. As you can see, this is a picture of isolated Staphylococcus bacteria showing ultrastructure of cell wall and cell membrane. The outer uh, purple colored layer is called capsule which prevents the phagocytosis by the host defense mechanism. The middle green colored layer is known as peptidoglycan which also contains stichoic acid which accounts for the shape of bacteria and also prevents the bacteria from toxic substances. There is a cell wall associated protein known as protein A which reduces the effectiveness of host immune system by binding with IgG antibody. There is another factor which sometimes associated with cell wall and sometimes remains free. They are responsible for the infections of nose and skin of face. When they are associated with the cell wall, they are known as clamping factor and when remain free, they are known as free coagulase. They are responsible for the infections like impetigo, pimples, furuncle, carbuncle like infections. Staph aureus also causes UTI and pyelonephritis, usually secondary to bacteremia. Staph aureus also causes some bowel disturbances. The virulence factor is enterotoxin. It's a preformed toxin, so the incubation period is also very short, 1 to 6 hours. It is responsible for staphylococcal food poisoning, which is characterized by nausea, vomiting, and occasionally diarrhea. It is transmitted through affected milk product and bakery food. Most common source is the food handler. It's a super antigen and produces cytokine storm. Now coming to the skin and soft tissue infection caused by Staphylococcus aureus. Say this is a cut section of tissue. The upper part is epidermis and the lower part is dermis. The Staphylococcus causes exfoliation or separation of the outer epidermal layer leaving denuded underlying dermis. So the virulence factor is known as exfoliative toxin. It also causes bacteremia leading to septic shock. The virulence factor is toxic shock syndrome toxin usually occurs in women using highly absorbent vaginal tampons during menstruation. This gram positive cocci also cause some connective tissue infections due to enzymatic digestion of connective tissues by the enzyme hyaluronidase. Uh, they are also responsible for uh, respiratory tract infection. So it was all about the pathogenesis of Staphylococcus aureus. Now coming to the laboratory diagnosis of Staphylococcus aureus, it will be discussed under the following headings. The first one is sample collection. It depends on the nature of the lesions. For suppurative lesions, pass and wound swab. For RTI, sputum. For UTI, midstream urine. For bacteremia, blood for food poisoning, feces, vomitus and food and for carrier state, nasal and perianal swabs are collected. The second point is direct smear microscopy. Gram staining of pass or own swab reveals pass cells with gram positive cocci in clusters. 
However, direct smear microscopy is of no value when Staphylococcus aureus is a part of normal flora in the sample. As shown in the picture, there are clusters of Staphylococcus aureus as seen under light microscope. As the smear microscopy can determine the viability of bacteria, they are cultured in different types of cultured medium. As they are non-fastidious organism, they are cultured in nutrient agar. In nutrient agar, they produce small-sized, circular, opaque, convex colonies. They produce golden yellow non-diffusible pigment as seen in the picture. When they are cultured in blood agar, they produce colonies similar to nutrient agar. In addition, they produce areas of beta hemolysis surrounding the colonies, as seen in the picture. McConkey agar also used to culture the staph bacteria. They produce pink colored colonies due to lactose fermentation. In the picture, you can see the pink colored colonies. Some special medias are useful when staphylococci are expected to be scanty or outnumbered by the other bacteria. They are known as selective medium. They prevent the growth of other bacteria and help in the growth of staphylococcal colony. Examples include mannitol salt agar. It contains nutrient agar plus 7.5% NaCl plus Phenol red as indicator. The next one is ludlum's medium. It contains lithium chloride and telluride. The last one is salt milk agar. Now coming to the treatment part of staphylococcal infections. First, the parenteral treatment. They are useful for more serious infections. The drug of choice for penicillin sensitive species is penicillin G. Drug of choice for methicillin sensitive species is naficillin or oxacicillin. And MRSA that is methicillin resistant Staphylococcus aureus is treated with vancomycin. The alternative drugs for MRSA are ticoplanin. Daptomycin and linezolid. For oral therapy, the drugs are decloxacillin and clindamycin.